Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are benchmarking Just Cause 4 and we're doing so with a boatload of different GPUs to help you determine if your graphics card will be able to handle this title and if not what a suitable upgrade option may be. For those of you unaware Just Cause 4 was released early this month on the 4th and as the name suggests it is the fourth installment in the Just Cause series. It's also the sequel to 2015's Just Cause 3. The games make use of Avalanche's Apex game engine Though it is a newer, updated version featuring diverse and extreme weather effects including blizzards, sandstorms, tornadoes and more. The game engine also includes improved physics based rendering along with a new animation system. Developer Avalanche Studios also claims that the game's artificial intelligence has been improved over what was seen in Just Cause 3 and the intention here is to make the NPC smarter, making them more of a threat to the player. This all sounds great but unfortunately the game has been very poorly received and unsurprisingly, it's mostly for the same old reasons we seem to see with these AAA titles that are either rushed out or whatever. Basically, the user interface is garbage, the graphics are unimpressive, and worst of all, despite the lackluster visuals, the performance is horrible. Seriously, when are developers and publishers going to learn? This is just getting ridiculous at this point. The game itself, while a little clunky at times, Seems to be a lot of fun, and although I've only played a little over an hour now, I'm interested to see more. The problem is, to enjoy it, I'm using an RTX 2080 Ti at 1440p, and this is required to maintain above 60 FPS at all times. Yeah, it's actually that bad. If you've got a GTX 1060 or RX 580, or God forbid worse, well, the game is going to leave you very, very annoyed. For testing I'm loading in at the start point, at least for the early stages of the game, uh, jumping into a car, then driving off the bridge, not off the side of the bridge, like off the bridge along the road, and then to the jungle. The test lasts 60 seconds and it paints an accurate picture of the kind of performance you can expect to see, which, as you're about to see, isn't particularly good. I should note that I've played the game to the point where you call in reinforcements and then the battling NPCs do add quite a bit more load on the system. Included in the testing are the 1080p, 1440p and 4K resolutions, along with just a massive range of graphics cards. I've also got some additional testing at 1080p with new and old graphics cards using mid-range quality settings, but please note Tim has a much more detailed optimization guide coming within the next few days, though given what I've seen in this video I really don't envy him for taking on that job. For this benchmark I'm using my updated GPU test rig which is built inside the Corsair Crystal 570X and comprises of a Core i7 8700K clocked at 5GHz with 16GB of DDR4-3400 memory. For the GeForce GPUs the 4.17.22 driver was used and for the AMD Radeon GPUs Adrenaline Driver 18.12.1.1. Okay so I think that's about everything, let's get into the results. Okay so with all the graphical quality settings maxed out the game doesn't look uh, too amazing, and with a GTX 980 you won't even see 60 FPS on average at 1080p. The same is also true for the Fury X. Those with older mid-range graphics cards such as the GTX 970 or R9 390 can enjoy frame dips into the mid 30s, and then if you have a GTX 960 or R9 380, well, good luck. 1440p is basically out of the question for previous generation GPUs. The Fury X and GTX 980 Ti were struggling with average frame rates in the mid 40s. So yeah, that's a little bit painful. Uh, not much more to say here really, so I suppose we should probably just move on to the current generation GPUs. Okay, so this looks a little bit better, sort of. I mean, we're only at 1080p, but at least there are a few more options providing 60 FPS on average. That said, the GTX 1060 6GB and RX 580 8GB failed to average 60 FPS, though the Radeon GPU uh, did get pretty close. And worse still, higher end models such as Vega 64 and the GTX 1080 were unable to keep frame rates above 60 FPS in our test. So ideally for that you'll want an RTX 2070 or better for playing at 1080p. It's like DXRs enabled or something. For those playing at 1440p, you will require an RTX 2080 Ti to, <laughs> to maintain over 60 FPS at all times, while the 2080 and 1080 Ti are only good for around 50 FPS for the 1% low result. And yeah, you can't help but laugh at these figures. Lower end models such as the GTX 1060 and RX 580 are basically a write-off here, so yeah, I can't wait to see the 4K results. 
Well, this looks pretty much like what we we're expecting, given what we saw at 1080p and 1440p. The RTX 2080 Ti is sort of okay here. I mean, not great, but it is at least playable. It's pretty crazy that we're seeing Assassin's Creed Odyssey-like performance in a game that looks nowhere near as good. And let's be honest, Odyssey wasn't exactly the best optimized game. In fact, I think most outlets bashed it for its poor optimization. Wrapping things up, here are all the 1080p results thrown into a single graph. There's really no need to go over these, but if you want to examine them more closely, please pause the video and take a bit of a look at how the previous and current generation GPUs stack up. The same applies at 1440p. There are fewer graphics cards here though, as there weren't that many that could achieve 30fps on average. Then for the 4K results, just 10 GPUs could break the 30fps barrier. The GTX 1070 did just fall short, but I've included it anyway. Okay, so the game maxed out is very demanding, but what if we drop the quality settings down to medium, disable SSAO, and change the anti-aliasing method to FXAA? Well, doing that boosts performance by around 30%, and you guessed it, that's not nearly enough for most of these older GPUs. The much-loved GTX 750 Ti averaged just 27 FPS. 27 FPS at 1080p using heavily dialed down quality settings. Even the current generation GTX 1050 was pretty horrible with regular frame dips below 30 FPS. Even with these reduced quality settings, the RX 570, R9 390 and GTX 970 couldn't keep frame rates above 60 FPS at all times at 1080p. Finally, the GeForce GTX 580, which we often test with using these medium type quality settings, had to be dropped from the test as it suffered massive graphical artifacts in this title. So that's probably going to be a problem for all GeForce 500 series graphics cards. Well, I can certainly understand why gamers are upset. In many ways, Just Cause 4 seems like a downgrade from the now three year old Just Cause 3. Now, things such as character models, they're much the same and animation detail also appears much the same. The real disappointment though is within the environment. Some areas do look a little bit better, a bit more detail, uh, others don't, and well, others just appear far worse. Take the water effects for example, or rather lack of. I mean seriously, this is a waterfall or a windows wallpaper. It's almost static and it looks absolutely terrible. I don't know what they were thinking. The water is just so bad in Just Cause 4. Surely this is a mistake. I mean, it really is laughable how bad the water looks. It's even more shocking because the water in Just Cause 3 was actually pretty amazing. Boats created wakes, there were waves, uh, ripples when you walked through it, you know, actual water effects. Even the explosions don't look as good either in my opinion, uh, they lack the detail of the previous title. The only impressive aspect of this newer game is the weather system, some of the effects there are quite good. So the downgrade in visuals is bad. But what makes it so much worse is the performance. I can't directly compare performance between the fourth and third installments in the Just Cause series, but on average, I'd say you're looking at 40 to 50% better performance using identical settings in Just Cause 3. And well, it has to be noted that the previous title wasn't the most optimized game out there. Compared to modern titles, you're looking at the same kind of performance we saw in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and we bashed that title for being unoptimized, and well, it looks much better. So Just Cause 4 really is a mess. The developer really has their work cut out if they want to save this train wreck of a game. Again, it's really a shame that the game itself seems quite decent, quite a bit of fun, but it's let down by lackluster visuals and absolutely horrible frame rates. And the poor performance isn't down to heavy CPU or aggressive memory usage either. Basically, you'll get the same results with an older quad core like the 7700K. And from what I can tell, something like the Ryzen 7 2700X is on par with the Core i9 9900K. That said, the game engine is really starting to show its age as just one to two threads are heavily loaded with the rest doing very little work. Still, we appear to be GPU limited as overclocking chips such as the 8700K to five gigahertz sees no real performance gain over the stock configuration. For the most part, the game's not too memory intensive. Eight gigabytes of system memory will do, and the demand on VRAM's not that high either. You're looking at about four and a half gigabytes of VRAM required for 4K gaming, about three and a half gigabytes at 1440p, and then around three to maybe 3.3 gigabytes at 1080p. So nothing too extreme there. And we have seen much higher demands with newer titles, such as Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example. Overall though, I think I would avoid this title, and fans of the series really need to I pray that Avalanche Studios work on some sort of patch fast, whether that's to improve performance, improve visuals, or 
if we can dream a little bit visuals and performance that would certainly be very nice Anyway, on that note, I think I'm going to end this one. Make sure you keep an eye out for Tim's optimization guide. I know I'm certainly very interested to see what Tim comes up with there because as you saw, dropping things down to medium and changing a few things like SSAO and the anti-aliasing method didn't really help improve things. Tim says he has a few tricks up his sleeve. So yeah, very keen to see his video in the next day or two. Anyway, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the work we're doing at Harbour Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You all gain access to our monthly live streams, our Discord chat, and yeah, a whole lot of fun over there. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I will see you next time. <laughs>